Hello, and welcome to Drawing with Paolo. Today we'll be drawing two characters. Two characters for the holiday season. We'll be drawing Frosty the Snowman, a very popular character in my day, and another popular character, but more recently, Olaf from Frozen. So let's get down to business and start drawing these characters. So we're going to draw both characters, one here, one here. So we'll put uh, our Frosty the Snowman character here first. And of course, snowmen are usually drawn with the head and three circles, so two other circles here for the body and bottom. But our Frosty the Snowman character is really just made with two big circles. Well, one smaller one for the head and one big one for the body. So there's our body and head. Then we need to attach, let's say, an arm on the left side with his fist over here. He'll be holding a broom. And then we'll draw his right arm here. And in his right arm, he'll be holding a pipe. So we'll add more detail as we go. Of course, he has a hat. This magic hat that the kids found, once put on his head, bring him to life. This hat is made of a shiny, shiny material and with a bit of a band on the middle of it. So now with the eraser, we can start erasing portions of this drawing to attach his head to his body by removing the bottom lines. Well, the bottom line to the top circle and parts of the hat as well. All right, so now it looks like the hat is on his head. And we'll erase other construction lines, just like this. Don't forget his arm. Shouldn't be able to see through it. And this one too. Okay, so we can draw in that band on his hat and the line to where the hat meets his head. And there's a little divot here in the hat that we're going to draw, just like that, like half a circle. And in front of his hat, we'll erase here a little space so that we can go in and draw the flower. He has a pink flower uh, at the top of his hat, so a circle for the middle, and then petals that go all the way around. This sort of look like um, ovals to a certain degree, right? Everybody knows how to draw flowers. These are super simple flowers, oval shapes going all the way around. All right, we define that hat there a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna give them nice oval eyes, sort of egg shaped, and with pupils in there. Very happy to see us pupils. And of course, a nice circular nose with a little circle inside there, and a nice happy smile. So, you know, Frosty is very happy to see us and happy to be alive. Hence that big smile of his. Give him shoulder lines on the left and on the right here. And we'll take care of those lines that we don't need anymore. There we go. All right. We trace that arm line. Picks up this top body part line. And then, of course, the legs. So Frosty walks around on his legs like this when he's alive. So we'll draw these legs here. They're basically just oval shapes. This leg will be the same, but the foot will sort of be aiming towards us, so it'll be a shorter, skinnier oval. Just like that. All right, so let's draw fingers here. The fingers that'll be holding his pipe. And the pipe essentially is just a cylinder. So two cylinders, this thick cylinder here, and then a thin one that jets out from the side. And then we can erase these lines in here, just like that. And add another oval here to the top. Now you may have noticed I'm using my iPad again, but this time I'm really just going to do outlines and, you know, regular pencil drawing. That way you at home can do exactly the same thing on your paper using any materials you have, be it, you know, pencil, coloring pencil, markers, you can do these drawings too without using an iPad. Then we'll add these circles here that are within his pipe. Now, I always thought it sort of looked like cork to me. You know how cork has holes in it. And, you know, it looked like a cork pipe. In any event, we'll close off his hand here, make a nicer line. 
and we'll do his left arm here, which is holding a broom. So we need to draw fingers here too, clenched fingers, that are clasping a broom and a thumb, you know, opposable thumb here. And then brooms back then were made of straw. And yeah, you know, today we have uh, artificial brooms made of synthetic content and whatnot. But today, you know, we have nice technology to do that. Back then they'd use straw. Well, back in 1969 anyway, when this uh, cartoon was made, they probably had straw brooms wherever this character was designed. And then this is the kind of look that we're going for here, this kind of straw broom with straps that attach the straw together and then stuck on top of a stick. Now you can brush the snow away with this straw broom. Uh, in Quebec, um, we can't use brooms. We need to use shovels. There's lots of snow here, so we don't start you know, playing around with brooms too much. Although my girlfriend likes to use a broom to clean off the car. Uh, she has a truck, so it's easier, I guess. We'll add a few lines like this, which allows us to give a bit of detail to our broom. Give it a bit of a roundedness. Okay, there are little details that we'll add here. Curved lines. Could be a metallic uh, tie-off piece, which allows the uh, hay to be attached to the broomstick. And we'll erase little lines that I've made that are unnecessary. Now, in your case, maybe your drawing don't have these lines that you want to erase, so that's okay. You don't have to. Um, but see, like this line is a bit too long, so we'll erase that. Same for the head piece here. So, you know, just go ahead and clean up the drawing. You, they might not be exactly like mine are, but you, you will have uh, extra lines that you can get rid of. If you would like your drawing to be more sketchy, so keep those lines. You don't have to erase them at all. Uh, more and more Japanese anime, for example, are using those sketch lines and they're coloring them in, which gives them a more natural, uh, maybe more dynamic look to them. And that's fine. If, if that's what you'd like to do with your drawings to make it look more dynamic and not erase those sketch lines off, well, don't. You can keep them. That's fine. I just feel like having a more uh, finished drawing here. So I'm going to erase his mouth and make it a bit more oval rather than circular. I didn't look, I didn't like that sort of surprised look. And probably make it a bit longer and then work on his eyes as well. I'm going to make his eyes a bit taller. I'd like it more like an egg shape like that. I feel like it's a bit more like the frosty I know. There we go. The reason why I'm drawing Frosty the Snowman is because actually I was watching it last night. It was playing again on TV and I was watching it there all by myself. <laughs> My kids don't really care for Frosty the Snowman. Um, they're 11 and 15 and years of age and they don't really care for watching Frosty. But Frosty reminds me of my childhood so I enjoy watching Frosty every year as it comes on TV. Alright, so our Frosty is coming along pretty well. We're going to start coloring the hat in. And so the hat is a very reflective hat. So we'll try to create a gradient from the left side to a little bit farther than the middle of the hat. And then we'll do a gradient, a reverse gradient from the right side to the left. I'm leaving a center portion there for a sort of a reflective band of light on it. And at this point, we can start uh, solidifying our lines by retracing on top of them a bit harder. So in this case, you can see, I'm going to make the hat nice and dark, erase certain portions of the hat here that I don't need anymore, clean my drawing up a little bit, same thing for in the petals, and then we're going to color in the right side here, fill that in, leave a little bit of white there, we don't want to color the whole hat in, which gives the illusion of a nice reflective surface. And then we're going to add some petal lines here. So within those ovals that we made, we're going to add a little line in the middle of them. It gives it more of a realistic petal look. Maybe one here too. And then retrace the 
center portion of the hat there. There we go. All right, clean this up. Clean that line off, the one on the top of the head, or top of the hat. Readjust my iPad. <laughs> I keep twisting it. I think the idea would be to put some sticky stuff underneath, like a, a sort of blue tacky material. So it doesn't move around so much. Now this band that goes around his hat is black. I want to make it nice and dark. Um, you can choose how hard you want to press on your pencil here. You can go over it a few times. The more you go over it, the darker it gets. So we want a nice black line. Uh, if you don't want it black, that's fine. You can just uh, use the tone that you want. I'm going to go in and make it nice and dark. I want a nice contrast with my hat. And we're going to do a little bit more gradient effect here on this portion. All right, and the underside of the hat will be a uh, neutral gray. And we're going to color it all in. Don't forget the right side. Right side needs to be the same shade of gray. Do it just like that. I try to keep my strokes uh, in the same direction and not change direction too much unless I want to make my lines a bit darker or, or the shading darker, then I'll, I'll use cross hatching. But for the hat, I'm going to try to keep that shading in the same direction. All right, retrace a few of these lines. Then we're going to clean up this line. I think I'd like them a bit fatter. So we're going to turn yeah this curve the other way around that makes it more like frosty and then color in his mouth there we go same shade of gray as his hat maybe a little bit darker here in the corner finally not the same shade of gray at all <laughs> a darker mouth like that all right And clean up this line right here. Now, as I said earlier, you may not need to clean up certain of your lines. Maybe your lines look better than mine, and so you can keep them as they are. But you know, some of my portion uh, portions of my drawings I don't like. I'm going to clean them up. You know, what you do at home is going to be different than mine, uh, than my drawings for sure. And yours might be even better than mine. The idea is that our, our drawings are different. And we have different experiences, different practice. So practice makes perfect. And as you keep drawing, you will get better and better at it. And even surpass me at some point. So there's, there's, that's one thing that I try to pass on as a message is a lot of people keep saying, oh, Paolo, why can't my drawing be as good as yours? And well, first off, it's not a competition. Uh, second of all is, you know, I've been drawing for a long time, um, you know, it's not my job, that's for sure. I, I do it for fun, right? So I just draw for pleasure, and that's what you should do as well. If you want to make it a job eventually, then that's fantastic, and you should do so if that's what you want to uh, strive for. But drawing should be just for fun and um, to use your imagination, stretch that imagination muscle, and draw stuff that you want to draw, whatever it is. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is that it requires practice. Any skill requires practice. You can't just wake up one day and be a great uh, speed skater. It doesn't work out that way. You need to work out your legs. You need to practice, know how to do your, your uh, skating strokes properly and, and all of that stuff before you become a great athlete. Well, drawing is the same. You can't wake up one day and say, hey, I'm going to draw the Empire State Building and then everything will be gorgeous. Uh, it doesn't work out like that. You need to practice a lot, sit down every day with a piece of paper and pencil, draw whatever you like, um, and then you get better at it. Of course, some people are better at it automatically, like uh, you know, a great ba basketball player has a better physical, um, physical aspects to himself, so he's capable of uh, reacting with the ball better and doing all kinds of really cool tricks and so on. And for some others, well, they'll have a harder time. And that's 
normal, I would say, but it's not because you're not great at drawing at first that you can't draw. I think everybody can learn how to draw, but you need practice, patience, and experience. So we are our worst critic, and people uh, tend to judge themselves harshly. So you know what? Be patient, take your time, enjoy what you're doing, keep those drawings that you don't like, and learn from them, and just be patient and, and have fun. And who cares what people think about your drawing? You know, if they have something negative to say, well, they can say it as long as they give you some positive uh, feedback or some great comments on how to improve. If it's just like, oh, this drawing sucks, well, then we don't care about that, those kind of comments. And uh, draw for yourself. Eventually, you'll get better at it, and you'll get encouraged by it, inspire yourself, and then draw anything you like. All right, so I've started the shading here, as you've noticed while I was ranting away. Um, we're going to imagine that the light is coming from the top uh, right of our drawing, and so we're going to color in the left side of our character here. And he's, you know, he's a 2D character, even in the cartoons. He's very 2D, he's very flat, uh, but in my drawing I feel like rendering a bit more of a 3D look to him. And the reason why I'm doing this is because Olaf is a brand new generation character, and he's uh, made by computer and because they use a computer to, gener to generate Olaf well he looks a lot more realistic he has a lot of volume more 3d look to him so I want the contrast of our our um, Frosty the snowman to be identical to Olaf we're going to try to keep them on the same kind of playing field so that's why he needs a bit of shading so that they don't look too different side to side or at least that they look like they're made from the same material, made of snow. So we're going to add uh, his thumb here in a few seconds, with the thumb holding up his pipe, and oh, we just need to re-straighten our iPad here. And we're going to color in underneath his arm here a little bit more. I just like to round him out a little bit, make him look chubby like he is. I just want to give him a hug and make this a little bit darker here on the far left side. Same thing, same treatment for his legs. A little bit darker here in the corner. And then let's add some shading to this cylinder. The cylinder shape should be uh, colored in the same fashion as the character, right? It would be illogical to put the shading on the right side because we're putting shading on the left side of the character. So when you're adding shading to things, make sure that you're following that logic across the board, ac across your drawing. All right, and then we'll erase, we'll clean this up a little bit here so that we can put in his thumb. And clean up these fingers as well. And go back to my pencil tool and add the thumb in here, which is sort of like a W. If you look, or a number three, a backward three, <laughs> if you see it that way. Sometimes it's easier to explain shapes by things that we already understand, like numbers. Shade that in a little bit as well. My iPad keeps moving. Okay, we're going to shade in the thumb. So the pipe is casting a shadow on the thumb, and the fingers are casting a shadow on the hand. So we need to color that in as well. And then using the eraser, we're going to cut out the palm shape, just like that. We're going to go for a little, you know, I can't say this is a real object, but we're going to try to use some realism in our drawing a little bit. All right, so I would say we're about halfway done our drawing, because we need to draw Olaf next. So we're going to add some wood grain here to our broom. I don't know if it's cold where you guys are today, but in uh, Montreal, Quebec, it's, uh, I guess, a warmish winter day on this uh, December 21st. So it's about one degree, which is a lot warmer than when we had last week at minus 31 degrees Celsius. So it's really cold and Today's warmer, feels like summer. <laughs> Just because when you're used to such a big contrast, or when you're used to getting, well, when you're getting used to minus 27, 
and then all of a sudden it ends up being one degree, then hey, it's summertime. All right, let's draw our Olaf right here. And we know that Olaf is smaller than, um, like much smaller than Frosty, but we're gonna draw them about the same height. And now Olaf has more of the, those three shapes as we are used to making uh, snowmen, plus his feet down here, um, which are sort of squished balls, snowballs that go here at the bottom. And then of course his uh, coal buttons. And then he's got this taller portion here to his head, like a cone shape. Um, and then another, you can imagine a reverse cone at the top of his head as well. So it's like two cones back to back. Bottom portion for his, his neck and jaw, and then the top portion for his head. And he's got his cheeks coming out this way, that attached to the top. And then this is his mouth right here. And then we'll put his teeth, or his tooth, I should say, right here at the front. I hope you're starting to see him. And eyes, they're not big enough, so we'll erase those, make them a bit bigger. There you go. Oh, I can see. Olaf coming out here. Now we'll put in his carrot nose. And drawing Frosty sort of warmed me up to draw um, Olaf, and I find it easier now. So sometimes maybe it's a good idea for you guys before you start drawing to sketch out something. You know, just sketch something um, that you'd like to practice. You know, draw a hand, draw a pencil, draw anything, and then get to your uh, project afterwards. Sometimes when you're warmed up, it becomes a lot easier. So to me, Olaf seems to be a lot easier to draw now because I have the warm-up practice of Frosty done just before. All right, check it out. So there's our carrot nose. And then we'll add some nice dark color to his eyes, leave a little bit of a shiny reflection there in the middle. We'll need to treat the second eye exactly the same. So remember to leave that, uh, we'll need to leave that little white portion in there. And there we go, color around that circle. Nice. Okay, and his eyes, the way they made him on the computer is pretty smart actually. It sort of looks like two snowballs that are indented into his head. And so we, have, we can create these recesses uh, above and around his eyes. So like deeper portions in the snow where these snowballs are. All the way around, nice dark lines. And we'll clean up some of the lines that we don't need anymore. Okay, he's got nice, a nice smiley face too. Smiley face. Wraps around and goes up to his nose. And his little cheek that's coming out like this. There we go and his tooth. I'll wrap that at the bottom here, make it a little bit wider, and then clean it up, just like that. So at this point we can go around, start cleaning up the facial portion of our construction lines, getting those out of the way. If you have any that you wanna get rid of, it's time to do that. That's what I like about the iPad. Frankly, the iPad is awesome because I can use the same tool to draw and to erase, which if you have a pencil, I guess you can do the same thing with an eraser at the other end. Uh, but also I'm not using paper, which so I'm saving, I, I like to think that I'm saving a little bit of the environment by not using paper. Although some would say that I am uh, recharging an iPad and using electricity, but where we live, our electricity is produced by water. It's hydroelectric uh, or hydroelectricity. And so I feel like I'm not, really polluting in this case by recharging my device. Um, but some places like somewhere in the US uh, and um, other places they use coal to produce electricity and so coal does produce a lot of pollution. Um, and other places use nuclear electricity so you know recharging an iPad in that case would sort of be like polluting as well. But I like to think that if I'm not using paper even though I were to keep I uh, was to keep I'm losing my English. Even though I were to keep that paper, it's still a little bit of a, could be seen as pollution. So anyway, I like to think it's a positive thing. Um, so we're gonna color in these uh, buttons, nice and dark at the bottom. Keep them a, a lighter shade of gray at the top so that it looks like 
light is reflecting off of them. And we'll repeat that another two times afterwards. But we'll draw the contour of his upper body here first. And it's not a perfect circle. If you look at Olaf, it looks like he's melted a little bit. So sort of like it looks like cubes to a certain degree. There's a definite line there for his head uh, in contrast with Frosty. And then we can really see here where that ball is no longer a snowball. It's more of a snow cylinder, I would say, I would think. And then we're going to draw his arms like this, and we're going to ask uh, Olaf, what are you doing with Frosty? And he'll be like, I don't know. That's why he's got his arms up like this. And I don't know. And I'm just going to color in a thicker line. Rather than do outlines and all that, I'm just going to color the whole thing in like this. And add little bumps and and uh, branch elements here and there. So it looks like, you know, tree trunk material. Just like that little bump here. Add a little bump there. And then we can't forget his three fingers, right? He's got three fingers. Maybe four with the thumb. I'm not sure anymore, but let's let's draw three. And he's sort of like, well, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Sometimes acting out what your character does is gives your character a bit more uh, realism, a bit more life. So we're going to color in his left arm here as well. With his I don't know attitude. Just like this, color that in. And then his little bit of a branchy element that's jotting out there and his arm over here. All right, we can't forget to, later on, we need to draw those branches on the top of his head as well, which will make him practically as tall as Frosty. Which is, you know, he's not that tall, uh, Olaf, so, you know, but it's only for, for today's drawing, we're making them the same height. And then again, it's my drawing. If I want him to be the same height, I'm making them the same height, all right? All right. So here's that first branch. A little bit of a thing here. Branch two. And we'll draw one other one. It's curving forward. And whoop, when we get rid of that line, we'll retrace it. Curve it over. That's pretty cool. There we go. All right. We'll add some uh, carrot lines to our carrot here. Make it look more like a carrot. And we'll color it in first. all the way to the tip and then little curved lines to make him make it look more of it more like a carrot and look at his tooth there I'm not too happy with the shape of it so I'm gonna finish coloring this and we'll fix that up a little bit yeah so we're gonna give it a bit of a slant right here just like that and erase the straighter line I think it's better with a little slant there. And we're going to clean the bottom, which I forgot to do earlier. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, we're going to erase, while, while I've got the eraser tool on now, we're going to erase other portions. And now remember the shading, just like with our Frosty the Snowman he needs to be shaded on the left side because the light is coming from the top right. So just like Frosty, he needs to be shaded the same. And his eyes are also shaded because with this character he's entirely made of snow. For uh, Frosty, Frosty's eyes would have been made of coal, but because when he doesn't have his, his magic hat on, his eyes are coal, and then when he put they put on his his magic hat and his eyes become illuminated so magic changes his eyes uh, from one color to the other. I just love the cartoon, the original cartoon, not the new ones. They're, uh, I don't like them as much and the drawings aren't as good either but just those songs of Crosty the Snowman, awesome stuff man, I just love it. it I know Christmas is coming. And that's what we uh, celebrate at my house, we celebrate Christmas although I don't practice the religion much well, not at all, actually. Uh, we do celebrate Christmas and meet up with the family. So I've got something on Christmas Eve and something on Christmas Day and something on the next day as well. 
So I really hope that you guys at home will have happy holidays, whatever those may be, whatever religion you are following. Uh, happy holidays. Here in Canada, it's mostly, I would say, Christmas. Uh, but there'll be some Hanukkah for sure and other great celebrations for other religions, of course. Covering a nice shading element here, all the way down to the neck, all the way, and then a little bit thicker here, just like that. He's coming along pretty well. So let's clean up his body, his upper body here, just like that. And then we'll color in those bottom coal buttons. There we go, look at this. So keep the bottom dark again and the top portion of it brighter. It's coming along, coming along very well, if I do say so myself. I'm going to shade the left side of this um, sphere, curving away as we go. And notice I'm readjusting my hand every time to keep that uh, shading going. All right, make it a little bit darker over here. And fill in that little white gap there. Same thing at the bottom. Make this a little bit darker. Yeah, and shade this in. Make this darker too. Yeah, look at that. Awesome. So we can really see there where the body is connecting by making that darker. And then as we move away, we'll make it a little bit lighter. And of course, make this dark as well, just like the two others. And we're going to keep the top part a bit lighter. But it is a little bit lower on the body, so we could make it maybe a little bit darker than the other two. In any event, we'll need to keep wrapping this around here. A nice dark reflection, or uh, shadow rather. Okay, clean up these lines. So in Canada here, we are entering winter. It is December 21st, so the first day of winter, and it's getting darker. This is gonna be the darkest day, and then starting tomorrow, it'll be getting brighter already. So we're heading uh, towards the brighter side once more. It gets kind of depressing waking up and it's dark and coming back from work and it's dark. It's always dark. There's not very many sun hours in the north. All right. So as I'm talking along here, I'm going to add a few more details. And like shading to the bottom of his arm, which looks like it's attached to his body. And then the next step, I suppose, will be, once I finish this little portion here, will be to add a little bit of a background. And that'll be that. So color this in. A little bit more. Give it a nice 3D effect. Readjust my iPad. Okay, so now what we're going to do is add a little curved line all the way across the page, just like this, which is where these characters are standing upon, and it grounds them both on the same image. And then I'll add little trees back here, little conifers. Um, snow-covered conifers. So they're just, think of stacking three cones one on top of another, and that's sort of the shape that we're going for. You can just draw one massive cone if you want to, you know, and that's fine. But this is a little uh, mommy conifer, and here's daddy conifer back here. So I had to pop a conifer back behind there a little bit. Same shapes, and we need a little curved line here at the bottom, just like that. And then we're going to add the little kid conifers right here in the middle. 
you can just see the top of their heads. And then we'll put like anti conifer back here. <laughs> anti conifer. We could shade them and all that, but I want to keep it super simple. So, what we're going to do is add shading to the bottom of the characters so that the characters really look planted to the ground. So, add a little bit of a shading. Now, of course, the shading needs to be on the left side as well. The bodies are producing a uh, drop shadow or a cast shadow to the ground and it has to be towards the left because we put all our shading on the left. And there'll be one thing left to finish this drawing. Afterwards, it'll be my signature to cap it all off. There we go, proper size. And then a little bit of a Paolo Morrone. Paolo Morrone 2016. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed these two drawings for this holiday season. To you and yours, I wish you a happy holidays, a very Merry Christmas, and an excellent 2017. Lots of love, happiness, and health for you and yours for 2017. See you soon on another episode of Drawing with Paolo. <laughs>